This video will show a case of DMEC in pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. The first step in this case is to remove the edematous epithelium for better visualization. Now it is evident that there is a large superior iris defect. After removal of the epithelium, a paracentesis is then uh, done followed by injection of viscoelastic and trying to free all iris tissue adherent to the cornea. As we can see, the viscoelastic cannula is used to cut all the adhesion and to free all the iris tissue. After this, the other two paracentesis are created and the spatula is introduced to free the iris tissue from the other side. Now our main 3 mm incision is created and scoring of the diseased desmet membrane is uh, done. Usually we begin at 6 o'clock and then score desmet membrane to either side. This is followed by the use of a reverse Sineski hook to complete the stripping of the diseased desmet membrane. Note that stripping of desmet membrane in eyes with bullous keratopathy is more difficult than those with Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy. After completing the process of stripping, a trial to approximate the iris edges is done for a trial of suturing, however the defect is too large to be repaired. Now an inferior peripheral iridectomy is done using scissors. After that I usually introduce a spatula in the created hole to make sure that the iris was cut full thickness. Irrigation aspiration of the viscoelastic is done. This is followed by injection of the DMEC graft. We note here there are two air bubbles that have been introduced during injection. This should be avoided as it may interfere with the desired position of the graft. And since this is a case of crowded anterior chamber, I decided to take a suture to prevent extrusion of the graft. Tapping over the corneal surface is done to unfold the graft. Then confirmation of the proper orientation was done by introducing a spatula in the skull and noting the change of the color of the spatula as it is covered by the folded edges of the graft. In this case there was a tendency of the anterior chamber to collapse and it was not possible to inject any air bubbles to help the process of unfolding. So unfolding was done using spatula together with injection of PSS from the paracentesis to prevent the AC collapse. Here the spatula is touching only the Smith membrane and there is no trauma by any means to the endothelial cells and you will be surprised to know that the endothelial cell density of this case is 1300 cells per square millimeter after one year. Now I am unfolding the last part of the folded graft and then formation of the anterior chamber a little bit to allow the introduction of the air injection cannula to the center of the anterior chamber and full anterior chamber air injection. 